Hello there. This is me and God's Obedient Servant channel. Today's lesson, we're uh, in, still in First Chronicles. We're going, to be, we're going to be doing chapters 7 and 8. I practiced uh, quite a few of these names this time, and hopefully I remember them. Yeah, there's, like, there's almost like no rule in the way that they're pronounced. It just varies, and it's like, it's kind of confusing. But, one day I'd like to actually be able to read them and pronounce them flawlessly. Because that's one of my own little goals. But yeah, if you've been following along, this is a Bible study channel. Uh, I go through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. And right now we're in the genealogies through Chronicles. So a lot of it's just straightforward reading. Um, there's still lessons in most of these. Not as much as some of the other areas, which... Um, yeah, it's like this lesson is pretty straightforward reading. But yeah, so... It's... Uh, like I said before, these are like the genealogies primarily used for the Israelites... You know, so they can trace back their lineage to know which tribe they belong to, especially when you're talking about which land is part of their inheritance. You know, so I'm going to jump right on in here. And we'll get started on this. Uh, but yeah, if you, if you like what I'm doing here, I do recommend sharing it. Uh, you know, if you want to subscribe, that's fine. You know, not really... Uh, I'm not looking to make money off of this, but I would like for it to be shared um, if I'm doing good. If uh, if there's things that some of you say, well, you know, some areas of imp improvement could be, you know, please leave it in the comments or anything, because you know, uh, feedback is always useful. I like to reach people with this. I like to teach God's word because, like I've said before, I've heard it from a couple of pastors now where they said that, you know, the Bible's been watered down in a lot of churches for many decades now. And I've noticed that as well some time ago, and I've been teaching about this. This is why I kind of started this channel. And I don't really have a church to go to is because I can't find one that actually you know, teaches the Bible as it's meant to be taught. You know, a lot of the stuff's been skipped. Like, you know, what's the husband of the woman? The man that takes her virginity. That's God's commandment. If you're a woman and you are born again Christian, before you lose your virginity, you better pay attention because the man that takes your virginity, then God says, is your husband, whether by choice or force. Um, I do know that it's different if that's, uh, molestation stuff going on there. Like, um, we're not going to sugarcoat the truth. You know, there are fathers out there that has done wrong by their children and stuff like that. Very evil people. And that is, goes against God's word of, you know, father can't marry his daughter. You know, same thing as a mother and son, stuff like that. Um, now, it's like, doesn't recommend, you know, brother and sister, recommends at least, you know, cousins and further. Because that's primarily with the Israelites. They, God wanted them to stay pure, stay within their own. For the rest of us, it's irrelevant. It's like Moses, you know. He was an, uh, a Hebrew or an Israelite, and his wife was, you know, uh, from Ethiopia, which we know those are, you know, Africans, blacks, or whatever you want to call it. So, <laughs> there's no real set rules. God does have suggestions. 
If you don't obey his suggestions, you will have a harder life. The thing with Moses, he sent his wife away with her father because her lifestyle didn't cohabitate with the Israelites' lifestyle, the beliefs, the way people want to live and stuff. You know, his family was taken care of and everything. He was also, what, uh, 80 years old? <laughs> so his children were quite older and everything, but they were raised in the land of Ethiopia versus... Uh, in Egypt with the other Israelites. But yeah, stuff like that. You know, God has suggestions, areas. He has commandments in other areas. And if you uh, go against his suggestions, it's not really a sin, but your life will be a lot harder. It will not be, uh, we've come to use the word kosher for a lot of this stuff. But, uh, but yeah, these are the things that we learn reading the Bible and learning also watching, you know, throughout history. It's like with the problems we're having in America right now, like, uh, I'm terribly sorry, but the melting pot has failed. The melting pot was going to fail to begin with. You can't have different religions in the same areas and expect them to, you know, be at peace together. Now, Muslims, the Koran is not going to be peaceful with anyone else out there, especially Christians. So Christians and Muslims cannot, you know, cohab you know, cohabitate the same areas because it's, it's a major conflict. It's going to be a lot uh, of turmoil and stuff there. And that's why God says if you want to live in peace, you must be with like-minded. Now, if you got uh, a bunch of races but under one religious belief or structure system, then yeah, it will work. But, you know, any other way it doesn't. And we're seeing that now. It's like we have you know, social areas in America falling apart. Same thing's happening in Europe where they got all the immigrants and stuff from other countries moving into France and to England and Ireland's going through it and stuff right now too where it's it's falling apart. It you know it it's it it just doesn't work. You know it's just these are just facts. And people are just going to have to accept that and it's like hey you're going to have to stay on your side of the tracks so we stay on ours. And always what happens is you always have one side trying to force the other side to believe is them. Which then eventually ends up to some type of conflict or how does Tim Poole say it? Grab your shot glasses, a, a civil war type thing. But, uh, yeah, it is what it is when it comes to that. So as Christians, we're trying to keep the peace everywhere we go. But we also have to understand that we're responsible for protecting our families and protecting ourselves. And also spreading the word of God. We're going to be in real trouble whenever, because it's going to happen, it's going to be, it's going to happen. Whenever we're gonna, not going to be allowed to spread the word of God. You know, we're not even going to be able to serve him in public. We're not going to be able to pray in public. We're, we're, I mean, we already have places in America that's already 
trying to ban that. It's already being shunned. People have been fired from Home Depot in some states and Lowe's Hardware's and, you know, Walmart's and this, that, and the other, whatever else type of jobs out there for reading the Bible in the break room. You know, as I said, America's falling apart because we're being we're being pulled apart. We have horses pulling every uh, everybody uh, everybody away from each other. You know, this is why we got to stay true to the Word of God. We got to know it so we know what God expects of us, and He also tells us how how to live and you know what to expect and how to deal with stuff like this as long as it's not physical or this that and the other just be people disrespecting you because you know you're being a christian well that's when we're to turn the other cheek if we're being physically attacked or this that and the other we are to defend ourselves we have the right to even jesus told his disciples if you have two coats, sell one and get a sword. That was the main weapon of that time. So, but yeah, I said I'm already, I'm already going on a totally different lesson here uh, than what this is tonight. But, but yeah, I kind of do this from time to time. I kind of want to get kind of stuff said that is a lesson that people need to know, people need to hear. Like the rules of the woman versus the rules of the man. You know, it upsets me to see women calling themselves Christians, trying to be politicians of any sort, state or federal level, trying to be judges, trying to be police officers and all this other stuff which gives them authority over men and God commands women that they are not to have authority over men. So you can't be a Christian woman and in those positions at the same time. It's one or the other. You're either living worldly or you're living godly. Like it's in the Corinthians Um, where it says that it, man was created first and woman was created for man. Even though man comes from woman, woman was created for man, not the other way around. And godly women are supposed to read this, understand this, and obey it. And godly men is also supposed to read this, understand this, and obey it. Because it isn't just, you know, you choose to have a family, you take on the responsibility. That family's responsibility is now on the shoulders of the man, the father, the husband. All of it's on his shoulders. And he's to teach his children to be successful, more successful than him when they grow up. You know, also he's to teach his wife what he needs from her so she can better help him become successful in these things. Whatever God has him, you know, whatever whatever life he's living that, you know, God wants him to live with, their, with, with wherever he's serving or anything of that nature, whatever job he's doing, you know. Getting jobs in society is going to get harder and harder the more Christianity is going to start being banned across America. So you're going to have to be able to have your own jobs your own businesses which used to be very common but it is no longer now everybody's trying to find a job or something where someone to hire them and it's slowly people are slowly coming back to it realizing that they can do a whole lot better if they have their own business but they also have to realize like the Waltons the Waltons owned a mountain they had a a uh, a lumber mill company. They cut down trees and they made lumber for building supplies. That was their business. It was a family business. But you can't have a business and then grow old 
and not have family to help take care of you just to keep the business going. You know, there's no social security system when you have your own business. Unless you pay into it, you know, you have to, I don't know how you would do that because I've never ran my own business. I grew up in a time to have a job, let someone else deal with that. You know, that's how I was raised. You know, it's a failed system because it teaches, people don't learn that the, you know, the ability they have of actually starting their own business. They don't teach this. They, they won't program robots. You got to teach your own children this. So you got to learn it and teach your own. I never got to have any children to teach this stuff to. And, but yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it is what it is right there. We can do better and we're going to have to do better if we want to exist, but we're going to have to have families. The whole structure system is the same thing as the Waltons. You have the one man doing the work. He has children. They help him do the work. And then as they get older, they can either stay with the business or they can go do their own thing. But then, like, the the man that's working the business eventually becomes grandpa, and he can still work the business a little bit, but his primary thing is to help educate the young sons coming up with reading, writing, and arithmetic and everything else and stuff while his son is working the business with his eldest sons and they get the younger children coming up. It's a big family environment there and everybody's helping take care of one another. And this is exactly how it's supposed to be. So if you want to know how it's kind of supposed, how life is supposed to be with stuff like that, go watch these old show called the Waltons and stuff like that. Um, you know, it's uh, quite educational when it comes to that. You, you're able to see how things used to be. It was very common, which they don't want us to have no more. That's why property taxes are there. Like the Waltons can't exist today because property taxes was taxing tax them out of, out of existence. You know, it can't be a family business. You'd have to upscale, be a multi-billion billion dollar corporation, all this equipment, do, you know, taking down hundreds of trees in an hour, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, yeah. The government knows what they're doing and they're very corrupt in doing it. And we may be forced to take our country back from this corrupt government if the government doesn't uncorrupt themselves. But yeah. Anyways, I'm already getting on about 20 minutes talking like this. So I'm going to head and jump right on in here and get to reading this stuff. <laughs> As it's pretty straightforward reading. Um, so let's go ahead and get started in this, uh, first Chronicles chapter seven, verse one. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua and Jashub and Shimron four. And the sons of Tola, Uzai and Rephaiah and Jeriel and Jemai and Gypsum and <laughs> Shemuel, heads of their father's house, to wit of Tola, they were valiant men of might in their generations, whose number was in the days of David two and twenty thousand and six hundred. I studied some of these names. I was like, <laughs> Ooh. yeah, some of these snuck back up on me. I'm like, oh, darn, I forgot. You know, when you're reading a couple of chapters and I've got all these different names and stuff, messes you up a little bit trying to remember exactly how they're pronounced. But let's continue on here. Verse 3. And the sons of Uzai, Israhiah, and the sons of Israhiah, Michael, and Obadiah, and Joel, Ishiah, five, all of them chief men. And with them by their generations, after the house of their fathers, were bands of soldiers for war, six and thirty thousand men, for they had many wives and sons. And their brethren among all the families of Issachar were valiant men of might, reckoned in all by their genealogies fourscore and seven thousand. The sons of Benjamin, Bela, and Becher, 
and Jediel. I'm sorry, I think it's a. Yeah, it's, it's Jediel. Trying, trying to I keep wanting to say Jedi. Too much Star Wars growing up, it's, but it's, that's not pronounced Jed, Jed, Jediel. Three. And the sons of Bela, Esben, and Uzai, and Uziel, and Jeremoth, and Eri. Five. Heads of the house of their fathers, mighty men of valor, and were reckoned by their genealogies twenty and two thousand and thirty and four. And the sons of Beaker, Zimara, and Joash, and Eliezer, and Elianiah, and Omri, and Jeremoth, and Abiah, and Anathoth, and Emma. Al Alameth, all these are the sons of Beaker. And the number of them after their genealogy by their generations, heads of their house, of the fathers, mighty men of valor, was twenty thousand and two hundred. And the sons also of J Jediel, Bilhan, and the sons of Bilhan, Jeash, and Benjamin, and Ehud, and Chenaena, and Zethan, and Tharshish, and Ahishahar, all these the sons of Gideo, by the heads of their fathers, mighty men of valor, were seventeen thousand and two hundred soldiers fit to go out to war and battle. Shupam also and Huppam, the children of Ur, and Husham, the sons of Ayr, the sons of Naphtali, Jazil, and Gunai, and Gezer, and Shalom, the sons of Bilha, the sons of Manasseh, Ashriel, whom she bare, but his concubine, the Amoritus, bare Maker, the father of Gilead. And Maker took to wife the sister of Huppam and Shuppam, whose sister's name was Maacah, and the name of the second was Zelophehad, and Zelophehad had daughters. And Maacah, the wife of Maker bear a son, and she called his name Parish. And the name of his brother was Sherish. Uh, and his sons were Ulam and Rakim. The sons of Ulam, Bedan, these were the sons of Gilead, the son of Maker, the son of Manasseh. And his sister, Hemalekath bear Ishad and Abizar and Meela. I'm sorry, it's, uh, I think it's actually pronounced Abi Abiazer. Yeah, we'll go with Abiazer. Sounds better. Most of these names are always pronounced in like three or four syllables. And I have to remember that CH is always a K sound, not a CH when it's like this. I've made that mistake in the past with a lot of them trying to pronounce them. That's why they didn't sound right. But anyways, continue on here. Verse 19. And the sons of Shemida were Ahian and Shechem and Lichai and Anayim. I'm sorry, it's uh, three syllables. Anium. And the sons of Ephraim, uh, Shethila, and Barad, his sons, and Tehath, his sons, and Elida, his son, and Tehath, his son. 
of course, if the names are short, it's normally two syllables, but those other ones, it's three syllables. Yeah. It's a little confusing. I'm studying it, and it's like, yeah, it's uh, totally different than what we kind of learned with names growing up with. So let's continue on, verse 21. And Z Zabad, his son, and Shathila, his son, and Ezer, and Eliad, whom the men of Gath that were born in that land slew because they came down to take away their cattle. And Ephraim, their father, mourned many days, and his brethren came to comfort him. So, from this, they've already taken it's okay to be punished by death for stealing livestock and stuff. And this is why in the old times of America, if you were a cattle rustler or you stole horses, stuff like that, you were hung for it. You were sentenced to death. Uh, we, because God doesn't really uh, condemn that. But it also helps people to quit being thieves because if you coddle thieves, they're going to steal more. If you sentence them to death for being thieves, they're going to stop doing that stuff. <laughs> no one wants to die for an iPod. iPad. iPod. Good gracious. Huh. My brain tonight. Anyway, so let's continue on here. Verse 23. And when he went in to his wife, she conceived and bare a son, and he called his name uh, Bariah, because it went evil with his house. And his daughter was she Shira, who built Beth Horon and Neat. Ne ne I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, it's, it's, I'm sorry, Nether, and the upper and Uzan Shira. And that H on the end when he's actually saying Shira messed me up, actually hearing it being pronounced. And I'm like, wait a minute. Growing up, you had He-Man and Shira, and there was no H at the end. It's just uh, the A at the end. So that's what always messed me up with saying, but it actually is just pronounced the same, Shira. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so let's continue on here, verse 25. And Repha his, was his son, also Reshef and Tila, his son, and Tehan, his son. Laodan, his son, Amin Aminahud, his son, Elishama, his son. Nan, his son, Jehoshua, his son. And their possessions and habitations were Bethel and the towns thereof, and eastward Naaron and westward Gezer, with the towns thereof, Shechem also, and the towns thereof, unto Gaza and the towns thereof. And by the borders of the children of Manasseh, Beth Shean and her towns, Tayanak and her towns, Megiddo, uh, Megiddo, and her towns, Dor and her towns. In these dwelt the children of Joseph, the son of Israel. The sons of Asher, Emna and As uh, Asua and Ashuai and Beria and Sira, their sister. And the sons of Beria, Heber, and Mac, oh, good gracious. Malkiel, I think it's a Malkiel, it's, it's weird, it's, that one's a little hard one to pronounce there. Malkiel, who is the father of Berzavith. And Heber begat J Japhlet and Shomer and Hotham and Shua, their sister. And the sons of Japhlet, uh, Pesach, uh, I think it's the only time it's, uh, 
is pronounced a ch is when it's at the end. As I said, there's little weird rules when it comes to pronouncing these names, but uh, actually, I think it is. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, Pesach. I'm sorry. It would be Pesach. It's still C H A K. Ah, messes you up. Pesach and Bimhal and Ashvath. These are the children of Japhlet. Couldn't find a button there. Like, where did my button go? 34. And the sons of Shamer, Ahai, and Roga, Jehubah, and Aram, and the son and the sons of his brother, Helam, Jopha, and Emna, and Shelesh, and Amel. The sons of Jopha, uh, Sua, and Harnifer, and Shul, and Berai, and Imra. Bezer, and Hod, and Shema, and Shilesha and Ith Ithran or Ethran, I think it's Ithran, and Bera, and the sons of Jether, Jef Jefuna, and Pispa, and Ara, and the sons of Ula, Ara, and Haniel, and Rezia. All these were the children of Asher, heads of their father's house choice and mighty men of valor, chief of the princes, and the number throughout the genealogy of them that were apt to the war and to battle was 20 and 6,000 men. Chapter 8. Now this one's a little bit shorter. It's about the same amount of verses, but a lot shorter. So, sorry I'm already over 30 minutes with everything else I was talking about in the beginning, but kind of felt it was on my heart needed to be talked about so there's a lot more to the bible than just reading it there's also you know everything else in between and how if we're going to teach things we've got to teach everything as well and how to navigate the world and blah blah anyways i'm, I'm going down another rabbit trail let's finish the reading first <laughs> chapter 8 verse 1 now benjamin begat bela his firstborn ashbel the second and Ahara the third, Joha the fourth, and Rapha the fifth, and the sons of Bela were Adder and Gera and Abihad, and Abishua and Naaman and Ahua. Uh, I'm sorry, Ahua, Ahua, whatever, close enough. And Gera and Shafu. Uh, oh, that's that weird one again. I'm trying to remember that. It's like I had a hard time with that before, even after hearing it. The thing I remember is Shephaphan and Huram. And these are the sons of Ehud. These are the heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Geba. And they removed them to Menahath. And Naaman and Ahiah and Gera. He removed them and begat Uzzah and Ahihud, and Shaharim begat children in the country of Moab after he had sent them away. Husham and Bera were his wives, and he begat Hodesh, his wife, Jobab and Zibia and Mesha and Malcolm. And Gia's and Shakia and Murma, these were his sons, heads of the fathers. And of Husham he begat Ab Abitab and Elpel, the sons of Elpel, Eber and Mishim and uh. This one's a little pronounced, uh, we would say shamed, but uh, it's actually pronounced uh, shamed. Yeah, the pronounce is actually, the word, the D is actually its own little syllable, shamed. Who built Ono and Lod 
with the towns thereof. Bariah also and Shema, who were heads of the fathers of the inhabitants of Ajilan, who drove away the inhabitants of Gath. And Ahio, Shashak, and Jeremoth, and Zebediah, and Arad, and Ader, and Michael, and Izpah, and Joah, the sons of Bariah, and Zebediah, and Meshulam, and Hezekiah, and Heber. This one, I'm having a hard time. Uh, Ish, Ishmeria. We're going to go with that one. I, I can't remember how to pronounce that one right. Let's go. Ishmeria also, and Jezliah, and Jobab, the sons of El, uh, Epilo. Oh, yeah. I don't know how that's. Uh, Elpeo. That's it. Elpeo. And Jacob, and Zikri, and Zabdi, and Elaniah, and Zilf, Zilfe, oh good gracious, Zilfei, and Eliel, let's go with that one, let's go, <laughs> 21, and Adiah, and Beriah, and Shimrath, the sons of Shimhai. And Ishpan and Heber and Eliel and Abdon and Zikri and Hanan and Hananiah and Elam and Antithijah and Aphidia and Peniel, the sons of Shashak and Shamsharai and Shaharai, Hariah, Shaharai, Shahariah, so, <laughs> whoo, a little complicated one right there. That's probably about four syllables. But anyways, continue on. And Athaliah, and Jer Jeriziah, and Eli Eliah, and Zikri, the sons of Jeroam. These were heads of the fathers by their generations, chief men. These dwelt in Jerusalem, and at Gibeon dwelt the father of Gibeon, whose wife's name was Maacah. And his firstborn son, Abdon, and Zer, and Kish, and Baal, and Nadab, and Gedor, and Ahio, and Zachar. And Mikloth begat Shimea. And these also dwelt with their brethren in Jerusalem over against them. See, why can't they be simple names like that? That's just so much easier just to, just to read off. They make sense. <laughs> Verse 33. And Ner begat Kish, and Kish begat Saul, and Saul begat Jonathan, and Malkashua, and Abinadab, and Eshbel. And the son of Jonathan was Merib Baal. Merib Baal. You gotta actually skip that in there. And Merib Baal begat Micah. And the sons of Micah were Pi uh, Pithon and Malek and Taria and Ahaz. And Ahaz begat Jehoiada, and Jehoiada begat Elameth, and As Asma Asmaveth. That's a that's a little one right there. That's a As Asmaveth, and Zimri, and Zimri begat Moza, and Moza begat Benia, and Rapha was his son. Eliasa his son, Aziel, his son, and Aziel had six sons whose names are these, Azrakim, Bakaru, and Ishmael, 
and Shiaria and Obadiah and Hanan, all these were the sons of Azil. And the sons of Eshek, his brother, were Ulam, his firstborn, Jehush, the second, and Eliphalet, the third. And the sons of Ulam were mighty men of valor, archers, and had many sons, and sons, sons, and hundred and fifty. All these are the sons of Benjamin. And that's the end of this lesson uh, tonight. And we just hit 40 minutes. So I'm not going to uh, keep this going. I said it's, a, it's already a long lesson. I'm, so I'm wanting to get back to trying to do 30 minutes, but sometimes we have to go over because things need to be said. I was sitting there as I was reading some of the stuff, I was remembering that like, God does not promote harems, but he also does not com uh, condemn them. If we as Christians are moved back into our own societies where we're cast out of, uh, you know, of normal societies, like, you know, the time of the mark of the beast when it comes... If you don't take the mark, you can't do any business with society. You're going to have to create your own society. Your own currency, your own this, your own that, which, you know, it's going to have a lot of complications there. But Christians may have to go back to having harems because of that. You may not be enough men to have, uh, you know, to be husbands to all the women and you know it's unless you have enough people to it's like what's the saying many hands make light work and that's very true and one woman trying to have a large family it's not fast enough <laughs> it may be one man one man ten women so if ten children are born all roughly about the same time period and as they get older, that's 10 extra hands, and then so on and so forth. You know, a lot of people don't really want to talk about stuff like this or think about, you know, society going to that. But it just may, even in my lifetime, which I've probably got maybe another uh, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, who knows? I may be gone tomorrow. You know, none of us are none of us are guaranteed the next day or even the next minute. This is why the teachings of Jesus is always be ready. Always be ready to meet your maker. Always be ready. Because you never know. For some people, I've seen people that I thought were healthy. They were younger than me and everything else. And they drop dead of a brain aneurysm. Blood clot in the lung. Boom. Done. No one's around to help or something like that. And they couldn't get 911. And even so, if they did, it took too long to get there. Uh, blood clot in the lung. Lungs quit functioning. That's it. Suffocate. You know. It doesn't take long for this to happen. But in today's society, with all, how unhealthy a lot of people are, how little they move and do any physical labor and work and increase their heart rate and increase their blood flow and stuff, just because you're thin doesn't mean you're healthy if you don't, you know, we have to work. God commands it. We're, to, we're supposed to do some type of work till the day we die. We have to earn our keeps. That's a commandment from God to everybody. And it also, you know, overworking damages our body, but underworking damages our body just as much, if not more. But yeah, I'm going to, I'm jumping down another rabbit trail and already forgetting that, you know, 40 something minutes already into this. I'm going to end this lesson here. I want to shut my mouth tonight. 
uh, <laughs> seems like I seem like I drank a lot of caffeine or something, which I don't. I don't even drink coffee. Never took to it. I've tried it, but it's not it's it's not something I like. It's uh mostly I just drink you know fla flavored water, lightly flavored water. But yeah, so sorry about it taking a little long. But hopefully, if uh, someone out there heard what they need, you know, heard something that helps them out, you know, as I said it's God. God puts God puts things on my heart to say, so I just start talking about it. As long as it's godly, it needs to be said. There's a lot of people out there that are not being taught God's word anymore, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you know, it's it's got to be done. Uh, we're supposed to teach all of God's word, not just itsy bitsy parts of it. I don't like skipping from section to section and everything else, because, like I said before. Anybody can make the Bible say anything they want it to if you do stuff like that. And so you, you got to watch out for that. I mean, just because there's a verse there that says one thing, you have to take the verses before it and after it so you don't take it out of context. But yeah. Anyways, I'm going to hit end this lesson here. And so once again, remember to pray. You know, pray for yourself, family, loved ones, pray for the lost, pray for the world, because like I said before, the, uh, the Bible teaches the earth is a sinking ship, this is the Titanic, it's going down, and we are to save as many souls as we can. We got to get the lifeboats out and get people in the lifeboats and save them from the sinking ship. That's our job as Christians. We got to spread the gospel, share the word. And try to reach the lost. And, But just remember. If you're trying to reach one person. Because you love them. But they're refusing to hear the word. Remember what God teaches about that. If they refuse to hear the word. Then pretty much you know. Well, he told, What Jesus told the disciples was. As, as you leave that city. They don't want to hear the word. Leave that city. And as you leave the city, kick the dust of that city off your shoes. As you leave it, don't take nothing of that city with you because that city will be condemned. Same thing with people. People don't want to hear it. They totally refuse it, this, that, and the other. Pray for them and don't waste your time. Try to plant a small seed and move on because you're going to miss somebody that does want to hear it. Messing with somebody that, you know, we're not going to be able to save them all. And we have to know that. It's like I'm next soldier. There's things about combat and everything else. It's just these are realizations. It's this. It's almost the same principle as combat. You're not gonna. You're not gonna save them all. You know, a lot of people are not gonna make it, and that's just the way it is. So, uh, until next time, God bless. Good night and goodbye.